What time is it? Hello? Seriously? Hello is all you have to say for yourself? Mizuki? What time is it? 2.17 p.m. Good morning, Asahi Van Winkle. <laughs> Good morning. At least I know you're up. I wanted to let you know that we're all gathered at Akemi's. I'm sorry. I'll be right over. No sense in hurrying now. Honestly, I'm not surprised. You didn't sleep a wink yesterday, did you? Um, didn't I? You don't even remember? You looked like the walking dead yesterday. Exhausted beyond all reason. I just did you the favor of assuming you hadn't slept. Guess old Daybreak Asahi's up to his old tricks again. You might be right. I'm pretty sure I don't remember sleeping. Anyway, we'll be here whenever you do arrive. Just try not to take any shortcuts or get sidetracked on your way. Yeah, yeah. I'll be there soon. Later. Sorry I'm so late. I'm just impressed you managed to sleep this long. You're the neat little baby needs wish they could grow up to be. Now, now. So, what do we do now? Personally, I have zero recollection of doing anything that make me an enemy of the state. Still, after being served to the threat that bold, there's no way we can move about with impunity anymore. I don't know what we can do. <sighs> damned if we do, damned if we don't. Should we do or don't, then? That is the question. Oh, don't scrunch up those youthful faces like that. Uh, Kemi? You know what we've never done? We've never properly introduced ourselves to one another in a round. Are you looking at me? That's right. Mizuki, is it? I believe this is the first time we've ever actually spoken to one another. Isn't this kind of a bad time? Not at all. Would you mind telling me a little about yourself, Mizuki? Uh, okay, sure. I'm Mizuki Aihara, a sophomore in college. I've been friends with Asahi since elementary school. I like to read, I work part-time as a private tutor, and, uh, my dreams for the future include... We get it. Next! Sorry? Now it's my turn! I'm Ryu Mimose, age 14. My hobby is collecting pink things, and I hate bugs. And my dream for the future is to become a top idol. When I do, I hope to bring smiles to every man, woman, and child on the planet and cheer everybody up. Oh, I guess that's more delusion than dream, huh? Still, I'm going to try anyway, starting right here in Akihabara. I think that's a wonderful dream, Ryu. And Yamato, uh, I do believe you're next. Huh? Come on now, don't be shy. I'm Yamato Hongo, age 16. You're 16? Oh, shut up. My hobbies are... I'm watching anime, we know. Are you still trying to pretend you're not shooting? The hell's that supposed to mean? I'll bet your dream for the future is just to watch more anime. No, it's not. Really, I actually want to be a scriptwriter. Or a playwright or something. Write the most interesting stories in the world. Wow, that's the first I've heard of that, Yamato. I'm hoping I can get my works played or performed all throughout Akihabara someday. So you can let your chuny flag fly high, I take it. What? Like your dreams are any better? How about you go next, Sonata? Katomi Sonata, age 17. Let's see. My favorite food is manju buns. Getting a jump start on the gnarled old hag thing, I see. You shut the hell up! And Katomi, what are your dreams for the future? I... Hmm. I've actually never thought about it. Well, you're a big fan of dolls, right? I make no secret of that. Perhaps I could become a doll maker. There are lots of doll shops in Akiba, so the market does exist, at least. I'd say that's a very achievable dream for you, Katomi. I don't know if I'd call it a dream myself. Feels like more of a delusion. How about you? Who, me? Yes, of course. If we were all going around talking about ourselves, your turn was going to come up eventually. Yeah, I guess you're right. Well, I'm Saki Hoshino, age 18. My hobby was really just nullifying delusions. I've never done much else. I've always dreamed about protecting the world, 
But of course, now I know how silly I was. So I guess my dream now is just to find a new dream. <sighs> Are you for real? I don't think it's that outlandish. Akihabara seems like a great place to find new dreams, if you ask me. Eh, I've heard worse. Finding your true calling in life is a dream for the young, but a dream nonetheless. How about you, Reiji? I really don't know a whole lot about you, actually. Nobody wants to hear about me. Oh no, Ray Ray, I'm afraid we do. What say you dredge up those old memories and tell us all about yourself, hmm? Yeah, I want to hear this. <laughs> You'll be bored. Don't say I didn't warn you. I'm Reiji Shinomiya, a youthful and vibrant 28-year-old. Ugh, I'm already bored. You're already rude. Shut the hell up. I like booze, hate things with no taste, and I've already left all my dreams behind. Ugh, I'm really bored. You're gonna be really crippled if you don't shut your yap. As I recall, your dream used to be using delusions to make people happy, no? A long, long time ago. Can't rightly call that a dream anymore. Guess I do have another delusion in me, though. Oh? What's that? I want to uncover and get my hands on every last one of the junk parts sleeping within Akiba. Ah, oh, cool. So you can build me a PC then, right? Yeah, eventually. Once I've gotten around to building PCs for literally every other person on the planet besides you. What's wrong, Asahi? Huh? Oh, sorry. I was just... thinking. Lost in some stupid delusion, I bet. Yeah, maybe. Well, it is your turn, Asahi. Asahi Tachibana, 19. As you know, I'm basically just your everyday meat. My hobby is sleeping, and the things I hate most are studying and work. I have no goals or ambitions. I just exist. I've never really sought out much of a future for myself. I just let time pass me by. But it's not just my future that's gone by the wayside. I have no plans for the present either. I'm just a wanderer. Hell, after all this time, I still haven't even been able to answer one simple question. Is it okay to destroy other people's delusions? Is it something we have to do, maybe? Asahi. I mean, look at what we've been saying. Aren't delusions just other people's dreams? If they are, then there's only one thing we can do. And what's that? Take out delusion contractor Cannon. As long as he exists, people's delusions will just continue to spread. I see. So if we stop Cannon, we won't have to force ourselves to nullify any more delusions. Stop them at the source. Regardless, should I ever lay eyes on him again, I plan on tearing him apart piece by piece. But the DAB is probably planning on taking him down, right? I don't think so. To them, Cannon's kind of convenient to have around. Hey, not bad, kid. What do you mean by that? How about we get going and see? Get going? Where? The fairy tale delusion scheme. There may be a clue left over in there. But still, but still, which one do we go to? There are three of them, right? Crap. Does that mean I'm going to have to check out one of them by myself again? Hey! You had me providing you with valuable backup and emotional support! You're forgetting about the Bureau's warning letters. Going solo right now is a very bad idea. Phew. Thanks, Bureau. The closest of the three fairy tale delusionscapes is the one on Main Street that Reiji and I cleared out. <laughs> Look at that. You already have a plan of attack. Was that so hard? Akemi, was this the reason you had us going around introducing ourselves? Did you know this would happen? That's a very bold theory. But haven't you heard the saying, secrets are a woman's most flattering accessory? No, no more, darling. You all have a delusion scape to explore. Off with you now. Away, away. I guess you're right. Come on, team. Let's get exploratory. Well, we're here. The delusion seems to be quite thoroughly cleared now. But nothing seems particularly different than it was after we defeated Cannon. So you're sure that there was a Cannon here? 
Yeah, took him down myself. Don't get cocky. I'm the one who struck the final blow, remember? <laughs> no, you weren't. It was me. Boys, boys, since when are you two such close friends? We're totally not. Not even a little. Is this what it's always like for you and your friends, Asahi? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> it seems like a fun group. Don't forget that you're part of it now. I guess I am. Anyway, come on. Let's find ourselves a clue to Cannon's whereabouts. Hmm. Yep, there's nothing here. Yeah. It's the same way it was when I struck that final blow. Dude, that was totally me! Quiet, halfling. So, let's take a look at the concrete facts. Yamato and Reiji defeated Cannon here once before, correct? No, just me. After which point, the spread of the delusion ceased. Wouldn't that make Cannon this delusion's grand phantasm, then? Come to think of it, that is a little weird. Wasn't this the pink-caped man's delusion? So not only did he live here, but he was also this delusion's deluser and its grand phantasm? That doesn't make any sense! As crazy as it sounds, you can't argue that the spread of the delusion hasn't been stopped. Meaning, he was the boss. But what can we learn from that? I might know something about canon that you don't. Oh, something you found out? Something I may have inferred, at least. Hear me out. I've come to the conclusion that canon may be a being who exists only in delusion. Someone dreamed up the character we know as delusion contractor canon, and that delusion began to spread. And because he's a delusion with the power to control delusions, he's able to create multiples of himself. So this isn't Cannon's delusion, but rather a delusion spawned by whoever created Cannon in the first place. It seems a natural conclusion, all things considered, doesn't it? Snowballing off of that, what if he's a group delusion? Like, Cannon's so strong because multiple people dreamed him up. It's not impossible, but numerous people having the same delusion at the exact same time is pretty hard to swallow. It certainly would be unique. But I don't think you're totally off the mark there, though. Huh? Think about it. Cannon and the DAB seem to have some kind of connection, don't they? That's a fine theory, but you've got no proof. Though it does seem obvious they're trying to use him somehow. Maybe before dealing with him, they intend to gain his delusory power for themselves. Which would mean... We need to be at the next Delusionscape yesterday. Let's go! Which one do we go to next? Whichever's closest. But they're both roughly equidistant. Then how about we go to the one on Junk Street first? The one we took down? Sounds like a decision to me. Come on! Nothing here either. And no changes since Ko and I cleared it out. Meaning that Cannon was also the Grand Phantasm here, correct? Yeah, that's right. Hard to believe there are God knows how many of that freak running around, though. But who could have spawned him? You don't think. Yeah, it seems to fit. Hmm? What are you two mumbling about? Nothing at all. But what we've got here is no cannon and no clues. Let's say we hit the next illusionscape. Hey! Wait up! We might want to follow them. Yeah, back to the real world. Hmm. What's wrong, Ryu? If you have any worries plaguing you, I'm always happy to hear you out. Well, I was thinking back to when we were in here before. I don't remember anything particularly noteworthy. It was something Cannon said to us, about the realities from which we want to turn away, and how delusion is the power to dig through the tiny gap between our ideals and reality. Oh, yes, I do remember him saying something like that. So, delusions are formed, by digging through the gap between reality and fantasy? Is that the gist? Hey, slowpokes! If you don't hurry it up, we're gonna leave you behind. I'm sorry, coming! Only one place left. I don't think there's any reason to go there, though. We're just wasting our time at this point. Why's that, Mr. Know-it-all? Hey, can we not fight for a few minutes? 
Well, what do you want to do, Tachibana? Huh? Me? Well, I, uh... Make up your mind already. Whatever Asahi eventually gets around to deciding, gets my vote. Then I say we go and check it out. Couldn't hurt, right? Right. Fine, go ahead and waste your time. Can't imagine you'll find any surprises there, though. It's decided, then. Like I always say, legwork is the answer. When in doubt, we've got to get out there and see what we can find. Nothing here, but a whole lot of nothing. What did I tell you? <laughs> I have to admit, this place does get me a little nostalgic. That's right, you were here with Akari, weren't you? Yeah, though I'm still not sure why. Man, that was a doozy. I never thought I'd have to clear a whole delusion scape on my own. But you weren't alone, were you? That's true. I had Mizuki. Sort of. I mean, we weren't really working together back then. But we are now. Don't worry about it. Um, Asahi, do you remember what Cannon ended up talking to you about? Not very clearly, no. He might have said something. Oh, you're useless. I remember. He said something like this. Delusions are one player only. A world just for you. That's what makes a delusion a delusion. Huh? What's that supposed to mean? I thought it was pretty straightforward. I'm not so sure. But he was the Grand Phantasm here as well, right? That's right. Asahi and I took him down. And when we did, the encroachment of the delusion came to a stop. Which means Cannon definitely was the Grand Phantasm. Then who the hell spawned him, damn it? I wonder. You look like you're onto something. Ah, uh, well. Somebody's coming! Listen, it's a group of seven, followed by an indeterminate number of maids. Our orders are to capture them on sight. DAB agents, let's destroy them. If we're found out now, we could end up in real trouble. We should try to slip out of here unnoticed. Ugh, fine. I guess that's reasonable. Phew, we made it out. Don't celebrate yet. They're probably in hot pursuit. If we all run together, we'll stick out like a sore thumb. Our group's just too big. Good point. We should split up. Where do you want to reconvene? Uh, Kemi's place has never let us down before. Yeah, seems like a safe spot. If they catch me on my way, they'll wish they hadn't. In your dreams. This is no time to bicker. Run already! Huh? Saki? Oh, it's you, Asahi. Guess we both made a clean getaway, huh? Yeah. No tails on me as best as I can tell. <sighs> Looks like we're off the hook. <sighs> Saki? Huh? Oh, uh, yeah. I guess we are. Are you doing all right? You seem kind of out of it. Did you eat something that didn't agree with you? Uh, hey, why do you always think it's about food with me? It's just... Just what? It's just that it's been a while since we've been able to talk like this. Just the two of us, I mean. Yeah, I guess it has been. You mean just the three of us? I'm here too, you know. Pinkoon, you know you're not supposed to jump out in public like that. Yeah. <laughs> this feels like back when we first met, doesn't it? Yeah, it really does. Back when you pulled me into this whole crazy adventure. I've been a real nuisance, haven't I? Oh, at first, definitely. Waking up early every morning was the worst. Sorry. What meaningful member of society would consider noon early? Pinkoon. Yeah. <laughs> but now, things are different. Hmm? I'm getting less sleep than ever with everything that's going on, but life is so much more fun than when I was a neat. Not that, you know, I'm not a neat anymore. Yeah. Beat you to it, Pinkoon. Nuts. The point is, meeting you changed me, Saki. Changed so much within me. What's gotten into you? But I guess 
I could say the same. You're the only reason I've been able to bounce back the way I have, Asahi. When you put it that way, it's kind of embarrassing. Yeah, I guess it is. Um... Uh... Yo, what are you nerds doing out here? Y Yamato? We're literally all waiting on you. So come on in already, will ya? Okay! Huh? Well, something wrong? No, it's nothing. Nothing at all. Let's just head inside, okay? Hmm? You're even later than I thought you'd be. Now, what could have kept two able-bodied young things like yourselves? N nothing to just laziness. And I got lost. Nothing at all. Youth is a wonderful thing. I miss it. I'm just glad everybody's okay. Sure seems like it. Nobody missing any fingers or toes? Not me. By the way, Ihara, what was it you were saying back there? Oh, yeah, that's right. The Sahi. You understood what I was getting at, didn't you? Who, me? I... Uh, um... I think I may have figured it out. Hey, not bad, little lady. Cannon told us once before that delusions are a recursive mass of potential, right? Oh, yeah, I get it now. You finally figured it out? Um, I think so. Basically, uh... Man, how do I put this into words? Trying not to look stupid is a worse move than admitting you're confused. Allow me to explain. Sorry. I believe we've been operating under a false assumption. That canon is specifically someone's delusion, and that's a key point of contention. The only way everything fits together is if you think about it like this. The existence of the delusion we call canon is perpetuated by the delusion we call canon. He's self-reproducing. That's it in a nutshell. Exactly what I was thinking. So the recursive mass of potential was him. He was talking about himself. Exactly. Cannon gave birth to Cannon, who then went on to birth more cannons. One cannon blowing up into a virtual armada. Which also explains why this day keeps repeating. I think I get it. But why is Cannon self-reproducing? Same reason a single-celled organism would be to ensure his survival. If Cannon's a creature of delusion, then he would normally disappear eventually, right? So Cannon's basic nature as a being of pure delusion is to strive for immortality? Cannon knows he's going to disappear someday, so he wishes to turn away from that reality. And towards a reality built from an ideal he can reach for but never quite touch. Which he can only achieve by digging through that tiny gap between reality and fantasy. What in the hell are you guys talking about? They're all things that Cannon said. Oh, okay. Makes sense. S seriously? You're just gonna accept that at face value? Argue, damn it! I can't be the only one confused here. Cannon begets Cannon. In a weird sort of way, it really does make sense. So it's true, you think? What I think is we've made a misjudgment here. Or maybe it's just a poor assumption. Huh? We've assumed that we're dealing with a single cannon. But that may not be the case. <sighs> this didn't help. My head hurts. Try to follow along. There will definitely be a test later. So, um, what are you saying exactly? Well, let's look at it this way. Asahi. What did your canon say to you? Um, that delusions are one player only. That they're personal worlds, basically. Okay. And Yamato, do you remember what your canon said to you? Uh, delusions are a pleasure granted only to humans or something like that. That's right. He told us delusions are a form of free entertainment that isn't restricted to any one location. Wait. See what I'm saying? One canon is not the same as all the other canons. They're all individuals. What does that mean for us, though? It means the canons each of us met were all governed by different ideals. There's the canon who equates delusions with pleasure, the canon trying to wedge the gap between reality and fantasy, and the canon who believes delusions are private, personal worlds. So they're all separate entities, then? No hive mind connection or anything, but operating independently? It's the only logical conclusion. 
based on how different our cannons were. Carefree cannons, stern cannons. If there are ten of them, then all ten are individuals. Okay, and what does all this mean? Well, think about it. What if one of the cannons decides to fight back against the DAB? That would be really nasty for the DAB. Which is why the Bureau's been going on a town-wide cannon hunt. But now imagine if there's a cannon who actually decided to work with them. That would be really, really good for the DAB. And there's no reason to believe a cannon like that couldn't exist. Hmm, I see what you're getting at. Cannon begets cannon. And the delusions keep on spreading forever, which in turn keeps this Sunday repeating forever. A situation which is decidedly very good for the DAB. So, in order to put the kibosh on cannon, it looks like we'll have to expose the DAB's true intentions. Then what are we waiting for? Let's head to the Bureau itself. Do you have any idea what you're saying? Our opponent is a literal state power. Well, what else are we supposed to do? <laughs> You've got a point there. I don't know about the rest of you, but I tore my warning letter to shreds. It's long gone now. I forgot mine at home. Uh, I'm with you guys to the end. Then let's infiltrate the enemy stronghold. All right, I'll lead you there, but just watch yourselves, okay? Where is it anyway? Clean on the other side of Akihabara. Here we are. Huh? There's nothing here to beat at. You didn't think it'd be somewhere we could just stroll on into, did you? Hold on a sec. What? No way! That's... that's... Headed into the delusion? You're kidding me. Not at all. This door serves as the back entrance to the Delusory Administration Bureau. This is totally a delusionscape entrance, isn't it? What in the world is going on here? I told you. Clean on the other side of Akihabara. And I do mean other side. Beyond the delusionscape lies the DAB. You aren't trying to tell us the DAB itself is a delusion, are you? Hell if I know. I'm not super great with the whole distinguishing fiction from reality thing anymore. Be that as it may, the Bureau lies beyond, and so too does Cannon. So we have to go. There's no excuse on Earth strong enough to hold us back. Be very, very careful in there. If worst comes to worst, run like hell, you got it? Hey, break! Huh. Made it in undetected. You're enjoying this whole secret enemy base thing, aren't you? You are such a kid. I totally get it, though. What, you want me to comment on your mental maturity, too? No, but it's an overwhelming feeling to be involved in something so much bigger than myself. Honestly, I'm a little scared. Don't worry. We're not going to lose this fight. Not a chance. Just make sure you do not drop your guard for a single second, you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we got it already. Now come on, everyone. Let's bust the door in and have ourselves a proper raid. I can't get this stupid door open. In order to go any farther, we need to disarm the security system. Please tell me you know the code. Maybe. You better start praying that the system hasn't been changed since I worked here. First, it's like this. Is it working? This should just about do it. Damn it. Probably should have seen that coming. So is this the end of the line? Guess our prayers didn't reach anyone from in here. <laughs> Can't we just break it down? The girl has a point, Reiji. It needs a disarm key. Okay, where would we find one? I have it the foggiest. Huh? Um, the door just opened. Oh, there we go then. Means we can keep on moving. It's our lucky day. I'd say it's pretty unlucky, actually, given that we didn't open it. Then who did? Someone on the other side. 
pay you, Director. Did you think you'd escaped our notice? I honestly never thought you'd be stupid enough to try sneaking in here. Nice to see you too. I was told that the letters we sent you had been both delivered and read. Meaning you have no excuse for this. That piece of junk mail? Oh, I tore it up almost as soon as I opened it. Do any of you have any idea what you've gotten yourselves into? Yeah, I think we do. That's why we're here. Oh, well in that case, come right in. I'm afraid our menu for today isn't particularly light, though. That's perfect. I've got the appetite for a heavy meal. Stop, Tojo. Director? Bringing our full military might down on top of these Cretans would be to repeat mankind's most base history. After all, wars are little more than products of delusion themselves. What are you getting at? How simple do I have to make this? Do not allow yourselves to be manipulated by delusion. You're not talking any sense. The stone axe, the copper sword, the bamboo spear, the steel blade. There have always existed implements of pain. But why inflict pain in the first place? Our desire to hurt each other invariably stems from one source. War. And what gives birth to war? The desire for power? The pursuit of riches? The eternal struggle between light and dark? Duh. All incorrect. All wars are born of the delusion known as fear. When the fear delusion is directed at a neighboring country and allowed to grow, it always blossoms into war. And then, into the hands of the people fall weapons, the very embodiment of this delusion, of their fear. Those weapons turn people into puppets of their delusion, and they dance in accordance with its whims. So you're not going to fight us then? Only if there is potential to be drawn from the fight. Potential? The potential for delusion. If we can control that potential, we can use it for the benefit of mankind. A populace stricken with famine, a town overcome with plague, a land in economic ruin, or about to sink into the sea. Delusory potential could very well be a savior to a world so afflicted. Delusion has the potential for that. A potential greater than anything you can imagine. So is that why you're trying to take control of the delusion contractor? Not exactly. Then why? An existence that can control and regulate delusions sounds like the realization of your wildest dreams. It is impossible to ever truly understand another person's heart. So, even if Cannon does help the Bureau, you're afraid he might betray you? Have you ever wondered why he's called the Delusion Contractor? That's why we have to eliminate him. He is an existence far too dangerous to be allowed to persist. And you seriously expect us to just believe your big fat lies? I've given you the facts. It's up to you whether to believe them or not. But also know this. In this world, there exist people who cannot handle delusions the way they're meant to be handled. And if their delusions are indiscriminately destroyed, what sort of fallout do you suppose there will be? So, you're trying to take control of all delusions for the greater good, then? Is that what you're telling us? Yes. That is the reason the Delusory Administration Bureau exists. So you're trying to become like unto gods. It makes perfect sense for a shady, evil organization. Think that of us, if you wish. Well, I sure as hell never pray to the likes of you. Then how about praying to me? Huh? Kasuga, you <laughs> Director! I finally had enough of your idealistic claptrap. No. No way! Director! But you... You're a member of the DAB, right? As the corpse said, one can never truly know what lies in another's heart. You're a backstabber. Literally at that. Backstabber? Please. I've only ever worked for myself. That is, until I was finally able to make the friend I'd always wanted. 
So you... were the one who created Canon. And what, pray tell, do you plan on doing with your new friend? Receiving prayers and changing the world. <laughs> now, let's open the book on a new era. One where you will know me as your god. Everyone, brace yourselves! Oh, my God. 
Hold on. Where'd Koska go? I don't see him anywhere. Damn coward sure knows how to run. Hey, so that Grand Phantasm... Yeah, same type as the one that was guarding you when you were captured. Seems like the DABs engineered themselves some custom delusions. So when we were all trapped inside the delusionscapes before... Most likely his doing, yeah. So our missing link from the DAB to Cannon turned out to be a traitor. And we had him in the palm of our hands, too. Oh, the director! Is he okay? <sighs> Damn it. No, he can't be. Can you take care of him? Yeah. All right, then we're going. Best of luck. Come on, everyone. We need to stop Casca and Cannon. Where the hell did he go? He's a wily little coward, isn't he? He's not running. He's lying in wait. Akemi? Why are you here? I come bearing news. Only no news is good news. I'm terribly sorry. Please, come with me to my establishment at once. There's something out front you need to see. Delusion? Well, at least it's clear that he's not trying to hide. My sources tell me Kasuga Yuki and the delusion contractor Cannon disappeared into that delusionscape. Ray Ray, do you think. <laughs> yeah, good thing your intuition is sharp. What are we waiting for? Let's crush them underneath our heels! Don't be so hasty, Ko. I can't think of a better time to be hasty. I can keep fighting, too. Ugh, you have ruined my moment by trying to join in. Don't do that again! They're going to be expecting us to run in after them. We're all pretty pooped, too. Reiji and Ryu are right. Time might be the only asset we do have right now. We can take the time to fully prepare before we give chase.
Are you kidding me? Kasuga Yuki has betrayed the DAB, meaning that he has nowhere to run. Aha. Uh -huh. So there's nothing he can do but lie low inside this delusion for the foreseeable future. So we've got him then. Like a rat in a trap. What's the problem with putting him out of his misery now? No, I'm also with Mizuki on this. For real, Asahi? Then what do you suggest we do? I don't know. Yet. All I know is that chasing after him right this minute feels like a very, very bad idea. But this is our moment. Why would you let it pass us by unclaimed? Because of you. All of you. Huh? Am I the only one here talking sense? Kasuga has nowhere to go but here. So this isn't a temporary situation. He's in the trenches, ready for war. But we... We have a place to call our own. A place where we can kick back and heal our souls. So let's take advantage of that. Let's rest up, then invade the enemy base once we find ourselves in perfect form. <laughs> okay. I can live with that. Thanks, you guys. A place to call our own, huh? Is something wrong, Saki? No, it's just... I'm kind of happy to hear that. <laughs> it's the same for me, actually. Well, now that that's settled, I'm gonna head back. I've been parched for a while now and need some refreshment. Yeah, we wouldn't want you sobering up. I might as well get to bed now so I can rise and shine bright and early tomorrow. Um, then I guess I should go too. And stuff your face with how many bowls of rice before you pass out? Kotomi, that's rude! <laughs> Sorry, Akemi. I feel kind of bad that we're not going after him right away since he tracked us down and all. Oh, that's hardly a problem. This is your decision, after all. I expected you to find your own course of action. Thanks for understanding. Then I guess that wraps things up for the day. Try to get some good sleeping in, folks. You'll need it. Oh, and nobody better be late meeting up tomorrow. Excuse you? Isn't that my line? <laughs> Don't make me laugh. Are you actually smiling, Ko? Hey, Tachibana. Be sure to set your internal clock right before you go to bed this time. Same goes for you. Don't stay up into the wee hours of the morning watching anime. <sighs> you know how many times this day is repeated? I've already seen everything worth watching. May I have a moment of your time? Cannon? My, I'm flattered to see you so flabbergasted by my presence. Why are you here? Well, <laughs> that's a silly question. I've been here for quite some time. But you were just with Kasuga. I am me, and yet I am not. Therefore, I can be here right now. So you're a different person then? A different person, you say? The answer to that depends on what your definition of a person is. Can a delusion contractor be rightfully called a person? Even if he is but a delusion given human form? Huh? Am I a delusion in human form, though? Or am I a human birthed from a delusion? That's gonna take some unpacking. There may not be an answer to that question. For in the end, I am but an avatar. Avatar? Yes, the delusion contractor avatar. Myself, and yet, not me. And yet, though I am not myself, I am. You're talking in circles. Just tell me what you want with me. Oh, that. It's something quite simple. I wish to lodge a complaint with you. For the one who made me what I am today, the one responsible for everything going on, is you. That day, my world changed. Crumbled away without a sound. And that's how I know that this world is a godless one. So I began to dream. I didn't want much, just one friend. And then I met him, my single, solitary best friend, who changed my world forever. 
Ideals don't make the world go round. Or at least, they shouldn't.